In general, E4 can get a little bit boring after you played it for a very long time, and that's why I'm gonna be using today one feature that almost nobody actually uses in this game. I'm talking about the Custom Nations feature. And for that matter, we're gonna be making the strongest Custom Nation that is not a horde. So remember, hordes are above everything else because they're just ridiculously overpowered in this game. So today we're gonna be making the strongest nation when it comes to ideas to your government reform and to your location which means potential for expansion obviously and having a lot of fun but most importantly it's not a horde but it's equally powerful to a horde in fact I wagered that we're stronger than hordes if we play our cards right here and we will be playing our cards right location wise I've chosen the lands of the Ottoman Empire because well let's face it the Ottomans are definitely the best located nation in the game at the crossroads between three Three major religions here, the Orthodox, the Catholics, and the Sunnis, as well as in between two actual continents, this area is the best for avoiding aggressive expansion and for some super fast empire building, let's say. So let's go ahead and click Custom Nation. We're gonna make Optimatoi our capital, and we're gonna give a little bit of a background to our nation here. We're gonna call it Nicomedia. It's a Greek nation and bolsters the good old SPQR of the uh, Roman Empire. Now we're doing this because a few hundred years prior to the start date when the uh, Latin Crusaders uh, sacked Constantinople and established the Latin Empire there were a few fragments of the Byzantine empires that uh, spread out around the uh, Anatolian Peninsula. One of these was Nicaea, the Empire of Nicaea. Well let's pretend in our game that we are a branch of the Empire of Nicaea because technically the Empire of Nicaea re restored the Byzantine Empire, so the current Byzantine Empire is descended from that particular Nicene branch. So we're another branch, okay? Just saying. We set our historical leader of the free world, Joe Bidet, as our leader, and he is a Chad Lord 666, but he is malevolent for some reason. Who knows why? We're cheesing a little bit the uh, custom nation points that we have, and we're getting 24 points from here and another 4 points from here from making our heir. Let's change this guy's name to Bob historical Greek name as 000 and age 0 as well and our consort Kamala Herpes is a, as well a 000 and she's also malevolent who knows why nobody will ever know now we are of course Greek culture orthodox and tech wise we set Eastern for role-playing purposes reality is that Anatolian is 10 times stronger than Eastern but this is not only the strongest nation it's also you know I'm trying to make it a little bit RP friendly here boys. Sprite wise we are using the Rome sprite. You get the sprite because I've seen people asking how you get the sprite from uh, having pre-ordered Imperator Rome. So if you did not pre-order Imperator Rome it's literally impossible for you to get the sprite. It is what it is. Deal with it. We're also gonna be a Solomonic Empire simply because we can <laughs> and because it is a pretty powerful uh, government reform to be fair. It is the one that the uh, Ethiopians slash Axum get once they have um, advanced through their mission trees. So you can get it in a regular game, doesn't have to be in a custom nation game. Idea wise, and this is where it gets really juicy boys, we're getting admin efficiency plus 10, all power cost minus 10, that means every single interaction that requires mana points is 10% cheaper. That includes devving up, coring up, lowering war exhaustion, every single aspect of the game is 10% cheaper when it comes to mana. Morale of armies for those strongs armies as well, infantry combat Ability and discipline, trade efficiency, diplomatic station cost, dev cost if we want to do a bit of playing toll in a while, and core creation cost reduction as well. With movement speed as the last one, I know it's not amazing movement speed as the last one, but the reality is that once we get to that point, we will have enough strength army wise, and no buff is going to be a massive game changer with the exception of movement speed. Why is that? Because 20% means that we're going to catch up to our enemies super fast and we're gonna have the strength from the previous ideas so that speed is gonna be a game-changer now let's go ahead and select the coastline here of um 
the Anatolian Peninsula, probably gonna take most of the Turkish provinces, I mean, you know, the Ottoman provinces, maybe even the coastline into Silesia, and I think I'm gonna lower the Diplo annexation cost a little bit to get some extra points, so we can get Gallipoli, which means we have our foothold in the Balkans now, maybe get the provinces here if we can. There you go, we took care of all of Divrigi, essentially. I'm okay with losing one point, I feel like that's fair enough. And look at our beloved Nicomedia, sir. Now it's time to start the game, let's go Iron Man mode. I got Lucky Nations on, but I'm just gonna change it to regular so I can get some achievements. Let's call this save United States of uh, Rome because there's both Turkish and Greeks united as Rome. Yeah, okay, whatever, fine. Mind your own game, okay? So guys, you're gonna be shocked to see this, but all of my provinces are Greek. Why is that? And this is an Iron Man game. This is vanilla, not using any mods. Well, that is because our primary culture is Greek, and whenever you make a custom nation, the province that you click on, that particular province, as well as all other provinces with that culture, Culture are gonna turn to your primary culture. So because I clicked on a Turkish province, all the Turkish provinces that I had in my country became Greek provinces. If I was to click on a Greek province and then after click on Turkish provinces, they would stay Turkish, they would not change to Greek. So remember that when you make your custom nation, because I've seen people in my previous custom nation video ask, how come you managed to make all of those provinces from the start, your primary culture? Well, this is how. All right, so let's start this off. We're gonna make the Ottomans our rivals, the Mamluks are rivals, as well as the Venetians are rivals, because let's face it, our primary goal here is to restore the glory of the Eastern Roman Empire and make Rome great again. Am I right, Joey? Economy-wise, not amazing, but that's mainly because we have a lot of crappy forts, so let's uh, get rid of some of these forts here. The one in Rhodes, the one in Smyrna, even the one in Seleucia is not really great. We're gonna replace them, we're gonna build fortifications over here, eventually we're gonna get Trebizond, and we're gonna build one in Tefrike, which is a mountain fort that protects the entirety of Anatolia. If we get one in Tefrike and one in Karsianon, well, then we have the entirety of Anatolia safe. Or alternatively, we can just build one in Silesia. Either way is fine. And then we don't need to have anything else in the central part of uh, Anatolia here. For that matter, I don't mind deleting the one in Optimatoi. We will be changing our capital to Constantinople after we take it back. Reclaim it for our empire. As you would expect a pretty standard estate. I'm not actually going to go through this. If you watched one of my videos, you already know what's happening here. I am going to be disinheriting Bob, so that means I'm going to give out the uh, prestige privilege after I disinherited him, because then I get 25 prestige rather than 15 prestige. And because we are surrounded by different religions, I'm going to give expansion a zealotry so we can get extra morale when fighting these different religious nations. I'm going to be allying the good old Valachians, also descendants of the Romans in their own way. And I'm also going to be allying Karakoyunlu for the time being. I'm going to use them for a while and then after I'm going to discard them like a Schnippeldorp. To also get one stability, and now that we have one stability, we can give out the uh, minus 25% advisor cost reduction privileges. Time to get a general for our armies here. Oh my god, Johnny, what is happening with your army pips, bro? That's in Schneen. All right, let's get our claim here, and let's attack the uh, nation of Trezond. Well, I'm not going to call it a nation, because first off, in the Middle Ages, these were not really nations. And also because not actually recognizing their existence. According to me, these lands are just Greek lands that rebel okay that's what's really happening here let's get an animal too give me some movement pips boyos i got a little bit of movement pips i'm happy with those movement pips and let's also at the same time attack the um byzantines because let's face it if we don't attack them now the ottomans will and i don't want the ottomans to make this province turkish the big brain thing about this uh, whole situation is that once i attack byzantium the entirety of the enemy fleet is now actually focusing on this tile because they don't want me to go in between the anatolian and the balkan area Areas, which means I have free reign taking the province of uh, Trebizond a lot faster with my fleet here blockading the port in Trebizond. Run ya ready bastards! I'm coming for ya boys! Wait, no, that's the Ottomans. The Ottomans are coming for the boy. I'm not taking Janissaries, I promise I'm not gonna do it. Oh, Moldavia became a march of uh, Poland. Uh, we just took to Constantinople. Beautiful. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, continue advancing in these areas in that case. Oh, we don't have military access. How about Ottobro? 
close. You don't want to you don't want to help me out, do you? 177 184. You're actually really close. If I didn't rival you, I might have actually gotten that mill access. It's okay. I can do it after the war with the uh, Emirati here is finished because then I'm going to have naval supremacy after these 30 ships disappear from here. And Emirati is uh, not ready to face the might of the Byzantine. That's that's what they're not ready to do. Well, looks like somebody did manage to get military access through the Ottomans. That is the Serbians. And because of that, I'm going to be attacking the south part of uh, Greece here. See what I was saying earlier? Everything is 10% cheaper. So war exhaustion here is also 10% cheaper to lower. And for that matter, I'm curious how much it would cost me to dev provinces. The cheapest is here, 42 right now. And with the encouraged development edict, that is actually 37 developed from the very start of the game. That is super freaking cheap. Emirati also seems to be uh, ready to fall. And let's uh, crush their armies before we peace out. I want to get the fights done, honestly, because I want to increase my army tradition, which is really going to help when I'm going to be fighting the Ottomans afterwards. And I just realized what's left of the Ottomans is 100% in the Balkans, which means they have zero primary culture provinces. Everybody in here is either Bulgarian, Serb, or Greek. Oh no, I'm sorry. There's no Serbs. It's only Bulgarians and Greeks. And a little bit of Albanians that uh, right now form the Ottoman Empire. You know, historically speaking, a lot of people do think that the Ottomans were basically 100% a Turkish Empire or whatever the sorts. But the reality is that that's not true. The Ottoman Empire and the reason why the Ottoman Empire was so successful is because they knew how to incorporate the different cultures within their empire and how to make best use of them. What I mean by this is, for example, when the Ottomans first started conquering provinces, 90% of the administration was Greeks. It was not Turks because the Turks didn't have the knowledge of doing uh, that administrative work. Eventually, they did replace them with the Turks, but at the start of the empire, it was a very much so multicultural empire. The moment that it became a, a predominantly Turkish empire and it started losing that multiculturalism, that's when, in my opinion, the Ottomans became the sick man of Europe since they didn't use their resources properly. Hey, we got the Van Stabilite. Eh? Oh, yeah. And we won the famous Battle of Matrega that nobody heard of. And this is gonna be Einstecken Vapenikurum. Oh no, they managed to get away. Let's stack wipe them in Kaffa in that case. We're also the first to get the uh, Diplotech and Military Tech 4. It's to be expected since we started with a 666 leader. Part of, you know, the fact that this nation is overpowered. I feel like pretty much every game of uh, EU4 turns into a Benny Hill show. Where you basically just run around killing the enemy armies. And they keep running away from you. So you gotta keep running after them. Alright, well we can peace out Imiredi. So no more Benny Hill's Imiredi at least for the time being. And and apparently the Serbs cancelled the military access through the Ottomans, so I cannot reach them anymore. I'm just gonna peace out the Byzantines by themselves then. Welcome back into the fray Byzantium, once more a part of the true Roman Empire. And I know what summer you were thinking, why didn't you just vassalize Byzantium and then feed them back the cords? First and foremost, because I don't really care about aggressive expansion as much as I would otherwise. I'm a massive nation, and taking lands from a Sunni nation that is predominantly in uh, the Balkans is not not gonna be a lot of aggressive expansion anyway and I don't want to wait for 50 years until I integrate the Byzantines and get direct access to the Balkans since I want to do a really quick expansion in the Balkans overall. Theodora is one of the strangest nations in history because obviously as you guys probably know by now Theodora was the last holdout of the Crimean Goths and in 1444 when we start our game Theodoro's uh, nobility was actually a mixture of both the remnants of the Byzantine administration in this area of Crimea as well as uh, predominantly in the countryside the actual Crimean gods that eventually got assimilated into the overall Crimean Tatars that dominated these areas after the Crimean migration in these areas. Finally we can do our peace deal with Trebizond so we uh, don't get any more war exhaustion per month. We're getting a, a lot of that right now because we uh, we got unconditional surrendered from Trebizond a while back. Circassia wants to be my ally. You know what? I think I can definitely diplovassalize you. Yep, I 100% can diplovassalize you. Let's make these boys our first Vasalski. And of course, the Ottomans are in the good old war against the Venetians. Surprisingly, though, it's not because they attacked Albania, but because the Venetians attacked Ragusa, which is proclaimed guaranteed by the Ottomans. Time to lower the enemy since we did get a little bit of autonomy passively increased in our nation whilst we had all of those uh, crownland shortages, which we don't have anymore. We're up to 20. 
20% crown lands now. We recovered a little bit after those couple of initial wars and now it's time to attack the Ottomans. We're gonna set Edirne as our war target and we're gonna try and rush for Edirne and get back these holdings into the fold. We're gonna essentially take the Greek lands and I'm also gonna be taking these two provinces so I have access to the Serbians for strategic gold mine interest. Wait, what? Philip II of Nassau is the new emperor of the- What? Oh my god, Nassau is the emperor of the HRE. Are you for real right now? This one province minor nation just became the strongest nation in the HRE. Cannot believe what I'm seeing here. Hey, thank you very much, Ottomans, for killing off my rebels in the south. Very, very kind of you. I'm also gonna be using my extra mana points to barrage the fort in Salonique so I can take this a little bit faster. <laughs> I got back my mana points from that uh, event there. Nice. And Salonique fell in 161 days. That's actually quite fast let's uh carpet siege the uh, bulgarian ports that's the rich areas and then the greek ports also well they're both the rich areas to be fair and it looks like we found the ottoman troopers in tirhala and kicked their butts in the process stop running away from me ottomans fight me like a man will you for once in your lifetime fight me like a man Pretty much how all the uh, historical battles between the Greeks and the Turks went right there. Trust me, totally not biased. Is this the last Ottoman army? I think it is actually, isn't it? Let's see, they got two th Yep, that is the last of the Ottomans. That was the last of the Ottomans. Any Fs in the comment section? Probably some Fs. I know I have my Turkish viewer base. My fellow kebab enjoyers, I know you in there. You know, we always joke about this, right? Like, uh, oh, Turkey, Greek, uh, Roman Empire, blah, 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 blah. But the reality is that if you're from the Balkans, doesn't matter you're Bulgarian, Romanian, Greek, or Turk, you're the same. And you need to get out while you still can. <laughs> Run! Run from the Balkans and grab a shawarma of before you run because because they don't have shawarma everywhere so just saying oh what do i see here some uh juicy tunisian troops i mean ships i captured three. Oh yeah my boy thank you very much i needed those ships very kind of you i'm gonna try to navally blockade all of the tunisian coastline maybe that's gonna give me the war score i need to piece them out so i think it will 3940 so if i bring these ships here it should be more than 3940 it is 47 of uh, 42 so let's reset that there you go you can take a little bit of money as well a noise we didn't even fight the tunisians and we took money from them we are essentially the schoolyard bully right now i don't think i cobaladrated the crimeans that i No, i did not because they're also allied to kazan so i didn't want to that's why uh i can get my peace till then i don't need to worry about crimea let's go for this exact karaman would join in a coalition who cares about karaman's opinion there you go boys nicomedia is back on it and we can restore the byzantine empire okay that's what's happening here and by clicking this button, not only do we become the Byzantines, we also do not need to core all of this because the Byzantines have cores on this, of course. So we just need to core the four provinces that uh, we also took from the Ottomans. Plus, we have the Byzantine mission tree. And this is one of the reasons why this is one of the strongest custom nations in the game. Let's get the uh, rest of the claims that we need on the Ottomans now and then uh, bring back our diplomat from there. Turks driven from Anatolia. I mean, from Western Balkans also. Okay. And Optimatoi renamed to Nikomi media and Athens okay we got a lot of missions there or events there done at the same time triumph for the Asian minor coast 25 army tradition what do we have now 69 army tradition not bad at all did I just notice that Venice became a great power they did they have more development than the timber what what is happening with the Venetians man oh they took a bunch of land from the papal states and they also killed off Ragusa technically they won the war against the Ottomans fair enough fair enough time to also do our little war against the uh, Epirates. Naples is not a bad target either then. Let's also cobaladrate Naples and I think I'm going to take some parts of uh, South Italy which in turn means that I can start expanding in the Italian peninsula, reclaim our old Roman lands from them. Having a massive fleet in the Mediterranean seriously helps out. Let's bring on the rest of our units from uh, Cephalonia into the uh, main Italian region. This fort was stuck on 57% for like 10 freaking ticks that means 10 times i had 57 percent chance of it falling and it did not fall let that sink in for a little bit i feel like the south tip of italy to start with is a good enough reference here i'm doing this also because i can release the nation of sicily from calabria after the sicilian rebels pop off here since this is a sicilian province and then they get a core on calabria and then i get uh, to release sicilian and feed them all of the 
Sicilian parts plus Malta because Sicily also has a core on Malta. I'm just playing for the long term here, okay? I'm planning for the future. I'm a big brain gamer, as they as they say in the big brain gamer community, which I just totally invented. Avec la siege of Roma. I really wish I could take this city now, but that would be a little bit too much aggressive expansion since I did not co-belligerate them yet. So that's something I'm going to do in the future. Let's cancel some of their alliances. What what alliances do they have? Pretty weak alliances, so I'm not going to cancel that. I'm just going to get the trade power instead. And let's kill off the Ferranese here. Oh, we're close to sieging it down. We might as well get something from them too. Let's bring our fleet over here. We can actually convert them to our religion. So Ferrara is going to be the first Orthodox nation in the uh, Italian peninsula. Peninsula. Aside from us, of course, we're also in the Italian peninsula. And with Epirus back into the fold, we can do the Recover Greece mission, which in turn means that we now have permanent claims on the Bulgarian area. So when we attack the Ottomans again, we don't need to worry about getting too much uh, core creation costs for these provinces. They're going to be 25% cheaper. Truce is also over with the Serbians. So we're going to be attacking them to get the uh, province of Kosovo and, well, probably will fully annex them, to be fair. <laughs> on the hills of Hungary, um, the last Serbians have been annihilated. Wait, the Herzegovinas, they're Serbians, right? Am I confusing? Are they are they Bosnians? Let's check. What does this say? Oh, it says it's Bosnian here. So I guess Herzegovina is the Bosnian part of uh, Serbia. All right, boys, time to look pretty again. Oh, look at that juicy border gore. I absolutely love it. Now, let's go over to the Great Horde lands because we want to give back land to our vassal, Circassia, and it's long ado. It's time for the two great empires here to clash, and I just realized they're allied to Karaman, and I could have co-belligerated him. Well, mistakes have been made. I'm not gonna back out out of this. It's time to kill everybody, essentially. Now, the big question is, how on earth did the AI cross from Abydos to Gallipoli, even though I have both the provinces and the freaking ships here, huh? How is that possible, chat? Tell me. Somebody explain, please. Hey, we got the last jousting tournament. That is a beautiful. Let's uh, joust our way towards the Great Horde lands. Karaman, more like Karagan. Uh, I need to stop with these stupid... Can we just edit that one out as well? Bet you're not happy with your life decisions now, Karaman. Can we uh, just uh, go ahead and fully annex them, please? 148, 150. You don't even have any soldiers left, Karaman. Why? Also, Astrakhan's done. Nice. Let's go to Sadatuv. Most of the um, Great Horde army is in Trebizond, so we can just chase them down and perhaps kill them off in these mountain ranges. All right, I guess next month we should be able to... Them. Yep, there you go. It reset. 100 per second. And we now have taken double the aggressive expansion to uh, get these uh, Karamani lands. But it's fine. I don't care about AE at all. And look how beautiful we look. It's worth it considering how beautiful this Byzantium slash Nicomedia is. Now let's give this stuff back to our Vasalin. And I'm also gonna take one province here. Let's see which one's the least amount of development. This one. Alright, there you go. We took that because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be releasing from that province the nation of Astrakhan. So Astrakhan has a lot of cores here. And I can feel Feed them back all these cords in the next war against the Great Horde. I don't really need this land, but I'm just taking it because I can. It's one of those greedy moments that most of us have in EU4. Now, because we got two vassals, we can also give out the strong duchies privilege. And if you guys enjoyed this custom nation, if we get 10,000 likes, we'll do a similar custom nation that is the best colonial custom nation overall. And if you want to get the save, you will find it on my Patreon or if you become a channel member. And until the next time, check out the most fun custom nation I've ever made. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 